guys, welcome to Vice Down. My name is Alex, and we're here in beautiful, sunny Barcelona, which I also like to call the land of scooters. As a CEO, four absolutely flies by next to me, but it's silent, you can't hear it. And yeah, as I say, it's the BMW CE04 here, brand new for 2022, and it's going to be released in around about March, April time in the UK dealers. It's going to be £11,700 as the base starting price. But let's just get into the review. What I'm going to do is cover the engine, the specs, the brakes, the handling, the whole electric shebang, and we'll go from there. I'll see you in a minute. So what a lovely place for a scooter launch, eh? Now let's start with the engine. Powering the all-electric CEO4 is a permanent magnetic electric motor built in-house at BMW's Berlin home and one that you'll also find on the BMW iX SUV and 2 Series Hybrid. It's an impressive design with liquid cooling to keep it at the optimum operating temperature and it's mounted right at the rear of the scooter between the battery and single-sided swing arm. In terms of power, the peak output is 31 kilowatts or 42 brake horsepower with 62 newton meters of torque or 45.7 pound feet accessed with a single twist and go gear. In the pre-ride briefing, BMW were eager to boast on the 0 to 30 time of just 2.6 seconds with a top speed of 74 miles per hour. Now this may make you shrug your shoulders a little bit, but in an environment where traffic lights and speed limits are king, silently zipping off the line away from traffic is seriously addictive. You'll beat anyone off the line on this and that's electric power for you. That power is sent to the rear wheel with Pirelli Diablo Rosso rubber via a belt final drive and the torque and power delivery is seriously smooth. Being twist and go of course it's immensely easy to ride and I think that anyone who can balance on two wheels would be happy atop this thing. It's capable of smoothly cruising at top speeds too, with uh, keeping up with other city traffic on faster roads as well. Oh, and you have three power modes as standard to pick from, Eco, Rain and Road, or four if you want to fork out for the Dynamic mode, which will give you full power and full regenerative engine braking. Road mode is much the same as that, but with a touch less engine braking from what I could tell. And the Eco mode reduces the access to full power and enhances engine braking. The rain mode softens both power and engine braking, so it's a sort of medium to that. Also be steady with engine braking here as there is no brake lights that will come on with just the sort of de-twist of the throttle. You can also restrict the scooter to an A1 license compliant 11 kilowatts if you want. Next, let's look at the battery. So 40 lithium iron cells are mounted in flat formation under the footboard, keeping the center of gravity seriously low. Again, an in-house BMW development, the battery is said to be good for a maximum 130 kilometers or 80 mile range per charge. On the day we rode a mixed route of city and twisty roads for around about 60 kilometers and we finished the day with roughly 50% battery remaining. So it does appear to be an accurate range depending on how you ride. Of course, we were riding, testing out the acceleration. So yeah, sounds good. Now an 80 mile range isn't outrageous by any means, but BMW are confident in stating that their average buyer is unlikely to require much more than 80 miles per day. So I'd guess their upmarket Canary Wharf rider will live in London already and look at maybe a 10 mile commute from Fulham or something like that. When you do need to recharge, 0 to 100% will take four hours and 20 minutes with the 10 amp current, and that'll be via the 2.3 kilowatt charging cable. To get to 80%, that'll take around three hours and 30 minutes. If you opt for the 30 amp quick charger cable, which is 850 pounds extra, that drops down to one hour 40 to 100%, or one hour five minutes to 80%. The A1 figures are a little bit lower than all of those. The battery itself is given a five year or 40,000 kilometer extended warranty. So if it drops below 70% in that time, it will be replaced for free by BMW. Servicing appears to be every 10,000 kilometers as per the onboard computer. So next up, scooter bits. I mean, I mentioned it's easy to ride, which is great for a city scooter, but let's dive a little bit deeper. You've got a 780 mil seat, a 231 kilogram wet weight, and a 1675 mil or 1675 mil wheelbase, which is very long, so you have to contend with that. 
It does feel stable on the road, but jigging around at low speeds in tight spaces is a little bit of a chore, though you do have the throttle controlled reverse gear to help you along. It's mostly that long wheelbase that's causing a bit of a, in inverted commas, issue here. There is a handy storage compartment under the seat and it's accessed from the side and it will just fit a large showy helmet sideways. So be careful if you have a nice visor, you don't want to scratch that up, but you can also fit the charger cable in at the same time, apparently. There is a stunning 10.25 inch TFT color dash to use. And once you get your head around the BMW navigation buttons, which are really nicely laid out and well-made, it does become second nature to use. You also get a smartphone compartment in the fairing and that's complete with a USB-C plug and a little fan to keep it nice and cool. You get the BMW Motorab app integration for navigation and calls and that good stuff. And on the seat as well, you get six options, backrests in short or long person mode and the flat bench option. It is a tad firm, but there's heated seat options to keep you nice and toasty and a heated grip option. So a nice warm commute is ahead of you if you go for one of these. Surprisingly, the wind and weather protection does seem pretty impressive. And that was on a brisk Barcelona morning. I was seriously impressed with the suspension and brakes here as well. The central spring strut with 92 mil rear travel and telescopic forks with 100 mil front travel really just add to a magic carpet-like ride, which is helped by the silent nature of the scooter. It does emit next to no noise. So of course, with that be steady in traffic because people won't hear you coming. You get twin 265 mil discs up front with four piston calipers and a 265 mil rear disc with a single piston. The stopping power though is super, super impressive. The dynamic pack does add cornering ABS and what they put as ABS Pro. And despite a slightly heavy turn in, cornering is grippy and accurate. And overall, riding this, it's really impressive. So it is a luxury spec scooter, but it is a luxury price. And with that, when is the CEO4 available in dealers and how much is it gonna cost? So it's due in UK dealers in March or April, or basically spring this year. The base price for the BMW CE04 is 11,700 pounds. Now, we were riding a model with a few bells and whistles added, of course, and that totaled just over £13,000. This had the dynamic and city pack added with the dynamic mode, heated grips, alarm, tyre pressure control, SOS button, and a few other things. If the base model satisfies you though, you could pay with a PCP deal. So that's a 25% deposit of £2,950 with 35 monthly payments of £138 or thereabouts. You then have a final payment of £5,700 if you wanted to go for that. It is a bit more palatable monthly and perhaps in three years time, tech would have advanced to present you with a newer, more advanced electric scooter, or you could just pay £5,700 to keep this one. In terms of style, you can opt for a white or gray option. The gray one is 220 pounds extra as the avant-garde option. And from my point of view, the white one looks a bit like an iron and the gray one looks a bit like a Dyson Hoover, but with the added orange plastic sourced from my high school DT lessons. Weirdly though, I do quite like the style. It's different and despite it being a bit of an electronic sausage dog, as the BMW head designer said, it is a head turner. It's a 400cc equivalent scooter, so you could compare it to the BMW C400 GT, and that's £6,995, so five grand more for this one. Specs-wise, you could also compare it to the Yamaha T-Max Tech Max at £12,500. So it's a little bit cheaper up front there, and the running costs, of course, being electric, are gonna be much cheaper month to month. We'll of course have to await the other electric scooters from the other big manufacturers to see how those all match up. And it looks like Yamaha may be next with the E01 scooter that they've got coming. What you do get for your money though, it's a tech heavy scooter and it was great fun to ride around Barcelona. If you're in the market for a luxury electric scooter and the price doesn't scare you off, I'd say give this a go. So in summary, I mean, we really like the rapid acceleration of the line, the fact that it's a tech heaven and how easy and fun it is to ride. We don't like the price, at least personally, and the long wheelbase does make it a little bit awkward in tight spaces. The heavy engine braking doesn't engage the brake lights either, so be aware of that. This is the CE04 electric scooter from BMW. Now, as I said, this one is priced at £11,700, but that's the base price. 
it's already quite a costly scooter in my opinion and for someone in my position i'm not going to be able to afford it bearing in mind that you're going to then start specking it up from there you get an extremely luxury scooter and as i mentioned with the handling the engine and just the technology behind it all it's superb but it's also that price for the luxury market that you're going to be paying on a monthly cost it's about 137 pounds a month and in three years time if you then look to either keep this and pay the five and a half or five and a bit grand to pay it off and keep it you may also want to consider just trading in for the newest battery tech and the newest electric scooter in the urban mobility market from bmw all things considered it's a really really decent good scooter to be honest i think electric is already at home with the urban mobility market it just makes a lot of sense you can charge it at home nip about really quickly and easily loads of torque loads of power and it's great fun but this has been the ceo4 thank you so much for watching leave a comment down below about what you think about this scooter or if you're going to be hanging on to petrol until the electric days are forced in in any case my name is alex thank you so much for watching check out visedown.com for the full written review but yeah see you on the next one ciao goodbye